This is going to be my attempt to, to do a very quick tutorial or crash course on pivot tables um, because they're incredibly powerful tools, but I know that they can be quite intimidating when the reality is um, after this crash course and simply playing it, playing around with the data set you have and making, I'd say, two or three pivot tables tops, you would be at an in intermediate level um, by that period. And then any sort of advanced thing you'd need to do, you could simply Google and to tell you the truth that's what I do whenever I run into any roadblocks on my pivot tables so let's get started here a uh, pivot table will require your data to be in columns and you will need a column header for each one of your columns of data and obviously it would be preferable if those column headers are descriptive of what falls um, underneath them in this particular case, we're going to look at sales revenue or sales transaction data from a fake company. And we have some interesting uh, information about the customers making the purchase. We have their income range. We have the number of items they purchased on that sales ID, the sales revenue, state, the sales platform of purchase, the date of purchase, whether or not they were in this company's membership club, the age of uh, the customer, the delivery method used, and then if they purchased via mobile or online, their method of reaching the website. Um, let's get started on inserting a pivot. That is very sim simple. We simply select the entire data range that we want considered in our pivot table. Go to insert, click pivot table. It brings up this prompt box that is basically making sure that we want to use this range and it puts this little dotted line around it so we see that it's captured everything that's very important if this is like a living d data document and you keep adding lines you want to make sure that this is continuously capturing all of your data and you would change it in here if uh, you needed to almost always you'll want to open up your pivot table interface in a new worksheet or at least I do so I leave that radio button clicked and hit OK, and we see a new sheet is made for us, and the pivot table interface comes up. This blank box here is where the pivot table will ultimately show, and over here we have the pivot table field list or user interface, and you'll see in this big box at the top, uh, hopefully very, um, um, or, or words up here that make a lot of sense to you, because these are your column headers. Sales transaction number, income, number of items purchased are the first three here, and so on and so forth. And then down here, we get into kind of the, uh, the levers and buttons we can push and pull to make our pivot table pretty, or I guess not pretty, but make it work. Um, the column and row labels is what we'll cover first. And basically anything that you drop into there will take the original data and provide every unique occurrence of that thing and give it its own either column label or row label. It will make a lot more sense when I simply drop something in here. So we see if I drop in state into row labels, each one of these rows has any unique state that exists within our original data. So you can already see there's more than one Alaska purchase or purchase from Alaska, but there's only going to be one instance of Alaska here. So the row labels are only going to show unique versions of what falls underneath that data. Likewise, if we want to know membership club, because you can either be in it or not be in it, those are the only options you'll see. You'll only see yes or no or Y or N. And then this bottom box here is values. And I like to think of that as the answers box. Whatever you're ultimately trying to figure out is what you're going to drop here. So in this case, if we want to know sales revenue by state and by membership club, uh, we would go to sales revenue and drag it into values. So right now we are looking at the sum of sales revenue by each of these criteria. Alaska had $381 from membership club purchases. And we know it's the sum of the sales revenue because it says sum right here. 
pivot tables will default to sum if your original data set has no blanks in it like we have here so there's no blanks within our data set if you do have blanks within your data set original data set it will show up as count and what I mean by count is we can force it to count actually by clicking the drop down menu and clicking value field settings and it will bring up this prompt box and we're presently in sum so the sales revenue are going to be summed we can click count and what that shows us is the number of individuals or the count of people that generated revenue by these criteria so the count of the people generating revenue may be what you're trying to figure out so that's why you would drop it in the answering box or the answers box or the values box so we know that two people made a purchase that were in the membership club and from Alaska there was 12 people from Ohio that made the purchase that were not in the membership club while there was 13 that were so that's count and again Excel is going to default to that if you have blank spots in your original data but we're going to go back to sum for our tutorial here and let's change this back to currency so it makes a little more sense and actually let me go back here to value field settings you'll see there's a lot of options within here I feel pretty comfortable in saying that about 90% of the time you're going to use the top three here sum count and average and if you need to use any of the others um, you'll probably know from the question asked of you that you'll need those and if you don't feel comfortable using them, I'm sure that there's a tutorial out there on YouTube or um, a step-by-step -step tutorial online so those are some of the selections that you can click for your answers box um, I guess we also haven't covered this box here which is report filter basically what that is is a macro filter for your entire pivot table and you can bring any variable into that and by filtering on that macro level it will eliminate anything from your pivot table that doesn't match the criteria that you select and again I say filter um, and I just jumped and did it without explaining it you simply select the drop down if you want to filter by age which is in our report filter and let's say we only want to look at uh, the folks that were really young that made purchases let's say 21 and under and if we click OK it's going to eliminate anyone that's over 21 in our sales revenue data so we see obviously the number gets way smaller than our total because we're looking at a subsect uh, subsector of our original data so if we want to bring back everyone into consideration we'd select all and hit OK it's also important to note that we can do those filters within our row and column labels as well so if we only wanted to look at Alaska we would select Alaska there and if we only want to look at folks in the membership club we could simply select just Y um, and so you you may ask uh, why would we ever um, want to leave a report filter in the uh, report filter if we can also filter down here and you can see why if we dra drag age down here it's going to change up the view of our pivot table and now we have two things within our row labels we have both state and age and uh, whatever you want as the like the macro heading is whatever is at the top here so if we want to know age of purchase by state we can look at it there or if we want to know state of purchase by age we can change the order there so we now we have every individual age and the states that exist under there um, again the default for pivot tables um, in the current format is to put both row labels in its own column or the same column which I personally don't like and I'm gonna put in my own bias here and tell you that more than likely it's going to be more beneficial if you go to pivot table options display classic pivot table layout and now it will enable you to filter on both of your criteria in row label because you're in the classic view and every each variable gets its own column so regardless 
of the things that you drag down there, it gets its own column. Um, you'll also see as you drag in more things, it's going to subtotal on every um, first, every one but the last um, label. So we have a subtotal of the age and a subtotal of the state, but not subtotals of income. We can eliminate those by right clicking on one of them, and we can eliminate the subtotal by state if we don't like the looks of that. Same thing with subtotaling by age if we don't like the look of that. Um, that's again going to be personal preference um, by aesthetics of what you're looking at. Let's go ahead and eliminate some of these things here. And uh, you'll also see the grand total of the column or the rows to the right and the totals of the columns down at the bottom for each section. So if you want to know all the purchases for um, members regardless of age, you'll find it down here. So we see far more people are purchasing not in the membership club. And then each age is totaled over here. Um, there may be an instance, like in this case, since we only have two, if we only want to look at members that are, or sorry, only look at members, there's really no need for grand total over here. We can eliminate that by right clicking and removing grand total. Um, highly unlikely, um, but it is an option. Um, usually you're dealing with row and column labels that have more than one variable underneath, but just important to know that that's an option. Um, one other uh, key feature that I'd like to cover is the ability to group ages and group date, not, not just ages, I'm sorry, to group uh, any quantitative value that exists in your row labels. So if we want to look at age, but we don't want to consider every single individual age and we want to look at every age in groups of five, we can do that by clicking in any of these ages and selecting group and then it will automatically populate with the largest and smallest value here and then we can choose the increment we said we want to look at every five years and it's going to automatically group our data so that's a little more easy to understand um, I'm going to control Z to get out of that and I'm going to show you um, where it's really beneficial is when you're dealing with dates actually you'll see it's already grouped from a previous tutorial I did but if you look at every single date it could become quite daunting and it kinda actually will be more difficult to understand let's say we want to look at just monthly information we can do that by clicking group oh I'm sorry I had the whole field highlighted if we just click on any one in there click group we're actually going to eliminate this selection box or you can keep it selected and just select months and that we want to group these into months and by doing that you'll see the dates roll up into their their header here um, very powerful especially when dealing with dates um, you can do that by month year hours um, you, you saw the options there so again very powerful tool there um, we can also, um, I think the last thing I'll cover is we can create graphs and charts off of our pivot tables, but you'll find that they can be quite ugly um, unless we make some modifications. So if we select the date, the data we want considered, and let's say we want to look at, uh, I guess it might make sense to look at for this type of data a stack bar or not stack bar but a side by side bar uh, we're looking at the monthly purchase by membership club being in one or not being in it but we see that you can filter within the actual chart which is great if you want to make modifications but not great if you want to copy and paste into a presentation so to eliminate that you go up to here the analyze tab and select field buttons option hide all and then it looks more like a traditional graph and you can format it just like a traditional graph or you can put a title over it uh, move the legend to the bottom 
and make any sort of modifications as though it's a normal graph. So again, um, you can make make the uh, any graph that you want, any format that you want off of your pivot table options, but just know if you want to put in a presentation, um, you're probably going to hide those filter labels. Um, that I think is the literally um, with that bit of knowledge you're at an intermediate level level of pivot table re and we did it under 20 minutes um, hopefully you have a data set that you can play around with um, and and get your feet wet and play around with dragging and dropping and uh, hopefully this helped thanks a lot for watching